All right, it has been quite enough time. I think it's been over an hour um, since I poured these up. So I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna separate and get rid of the impression um, on my model. So I'm gonna start with this one here. Um, I always like to start by just trying it with my hand first. If you didn't get any gypsum that went up over the impression, um, it can be pretty easy to take off. So I'm just going to hold on to the base and pull up. And that one came off extremely easy. Let's try this one over here. This one's given me, it's not coming off quite as easy. Um, so what I can do is like, if you have any spots where gypsum came kind of up over the impression, you can use your lab knife to kind of chip it away. Just kind of carefully break some of those pieces away. This one's not that bad, but. Um, and then what you can do is take your lab knife and stick it at the base of where your impression is, the base, right where it comes down and meets the gypsum. And I like to just stick it in there and give it kind of a little, little pressure to kind of move it up. And you can do that on both sides. Just kind of give it a twist and then see if you can wiggle your impression away. So then, ooh, that doesn't look good. So we don't want those bubbles. That definitely doesn't look good. Um, but aside from those two bubbles, that is looking pretty good. Let's take a closer look here. This one's looking good. A couple small bubbles on the occlusal here. And we also wanna see if they're pretty flat. So we ideally want them to be flat to the table. We don't want it to be doing a little takeoff here. So we want them to be fairly flat and that's good. And that's what we're looking for. The next step is gonna to be to trim these up. So that's what I'll show you in our next video. Okay, we're going to trim our models. So this is basically what we're going for. This is a very old, dirty demo model that I have, um, but I am just showing this to you for the general shape of the models. So you can see that when these sit, they are fairly parallel top and bottom, like a little nice sandwich. The maxillary model, you can see, has this really specific shape to it. We have nice straight lines, pointed edges. There's nothing rounded on this model. This is the shape that we are gonna try to make. And then for the mandibular, we have one rounded edge. This anterior portion, it has a rounded arch to it, uh, but everything else looks basically the same as this one. So same type of shape. So I'm gonna show you how to go from this, the models that you, you poured up, um, to this. So the first thing I like to do, especially if this is the first time you're doing it or the first 10 times you're doing it, it's nice to draw some markings on your models. Um, I'm gonna do them in Sharpie so they're easy for us to see, but you can always use a pencil or a pen, just whatever you can see is fine. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw lines down the central grooves of the posterior teeth, so molars and premolars, so these five posterior teeth on both sides. Just draw a line right down the central grooves. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is on the anterior, I'm gonna put a mark at the midline and I'm gonna put a mark on the center of the canines or the canine eminence. So you've got three marks on the front. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. So canine eminence and then the midline. So that's gonna give me kind of a guide as I go as far as trimming. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll take these models over to the trimmer and we'll get started on those. Now we're going to go ahead and trim our models. I'm gonna start by trimming the maxillary and I'm gonna trim the back edge first to get a nice flat edge. I want that flat edge to be equal distance from both of the distal molars. So I'm gonna start by lining up the back flat on the plate with the wheel and I'm going to push against the wheel to start the trimming process. I'm watching from above looking down at the molars to make sure that I get equal amounts of material at that most dis distal aspect of the model. It's starting to get flat and I'm going to keep trimming. You only need about three to four millimeters of material at the after the molars, so only about three to four millimeters of material for your base.
I rinse off the model after each time I pull it away from the grinder. Now that looks pretty good. That's about three to four millimeters there. Now I'm gonna try to, to trim the sides. So for this, I'm using that line I drew across the molars and premolars, and I'm trying to line that drawn line up with the actual wheel itself and make those parallel. And so then I'm pushing against the wheel and this is gonna create an angled line for me. And here you can see how the angle is parallel with that line. And now I'm gonna do the other side. Now here you can see both lines and how they are parallel with the lines that I drew and they form a small angle. Now I'm going to trim the area between the midline and the canines. So remember we marked those areas and so we're trying to line that up with the wheel and then move forward. When you do this part of the process, you wanna do little bits at a time so you can try to get your points in the spots where you need them. Remember, we're looking to get one point at the midline in between the centrals and then a point at each canine eminence. So we trim little by little and then we just try to get all of our things where we need them to be. So you can always trim more material, but you can't add material back. So it's starting to look pretty good. Our points are a little bit off, but they're, they're getting there. At some point, you may be a perfectionist like I am, and you may wanna just keep going and going and going to get them perfect. There comes a point though where you just cannot trim anymore. So that's looking pretty good. So now we wanna make sure we trim these back corners. So to do that, what I like to do is hold the model up and put my fingers on it and pretend that it's an arrow. And I'm gonna take that point where my fingers are and I'm gonna take that arrow and point it directly towards the wheel and push. And this is going to give me the correct angle. And I'll do that same thing on the other corner. So now you can see the bottom corners have a small angle on them. It's better to look at your model from the back side because you can actually see the shape a little better that way. So that's our maxillary model. We'll now trim our mandibular model and I'll start out by trimming it the same way. I'm gonna start with the back and get a nice flat back side on it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim the sides. And remember, I'm looking at that line that I've drawn on the molars and canine, or molars and premolars, and I'm trying to get that line parallel with the wheel in order to get a good parallel line. And now that we have our edges, we can start to round the anterior area. Remember, there's no point on the mandibular model. We're making a rounded edge, so it should be equal and rounded from canine eminence to canine eminence. Now we're starting to get that rounded edge. It's a little off. But we're also going to trim those back corners as well. Don't forget about those. Make sure you rinse in between each cut. And now we can do a couple final touches to it. And there you have the shape for the mandibular model.